you know, some things happen in life, like once in a lifetime, and then you truly feel like so. Some people would say lucky, I would say blessed. In 1999, I was nominated for the Cora Awards, the African Grammys. It's a ceremony in South Africa, the most prestigious uh, stuff we had as Africans back then. Before MTV Africa existed, before uh, all these things, it was really like the, th the, the shit. So I'm nominated. Four things happened to me that day that marked me forever and made me realize that the mindset that I had at that, that time and the dreams that I had, I would say that I realized 20 to 35% of them in one day. So this is what happened. First thing, it's the afternoon. The show is gonna happen tonight at 8 p.m. We hear all the models are getting dressed. It was happening in Sun City, not far from Johannesburg, like an hour from Johannesburg. So, and so we had like a, a whole hotel. We knew that somebody very important was around, but we didn't know who. And um, the hotel that we were was part of a big commercial center. And I don't know if it's because of the event, uh, why, but the whole commercial center was completely closed. Uh, it was only open to the people who were inside of the hotel and it was only us artists. It was like a bunch of artists. Anyway, long story short, with my manager, Guylaine, and uh, uh, somebody else, a journalist, we just decided to walk around in the commercial center because we were bored. So we hear walking, walking, chilling, and all of a sudden, we hear some excitation in the air. But you know that kind of excitation, that, like, that one. Like we see models running, we see people, but no people from, from the streets, like artists. It was only like in, in, the, in the commercial center, in the, in the hotel, it was only allowed artists, dancers, managers, journalists. And everybody's like going crazy. And I'm like, what's going on? And one girl, like one model I remember, she arrived to us like crying. <laughs> Michael is here! I'm like, who? And who do I see in front of me? Walking around with him and one bodyguard and the security on the sides, but it was like, cause the whole commercial center was closed. So he, he felt like probably more secure. And I see Michael Jackson, like not I see Michael Jackson in the distance. I see Michael Jackson in front of me, like, and uh, yeah, he's, he's like, you know, he's saying hi to everybody, he's cool. So the girls are going crazy, but the bodyguard is like, you know, with one finger, he could like stop people from going crazy. And uh, I arrived to the bodyguard and I said, uh, do you mind if, if I take a picture of an artist? And uh, Michael says, yes, of course. So I get near Michael Jackson and I, I hold him like this. Like, this is a strange sensation. It's, it's another human being, but it's Michael Jackson. And I said, uh, are you all right? And he said, yes, thank you. And we took a picture. Now, I would say that one of my inspiration is Michael Jackson. I grew up listening to him and being here with him, he felt special. Now about that picture, when I, it was not like today. Today, you see somebody, you take your iPhone or your, you take 1000 pictures and yeah, you're good to go. Back then, you had to have uh, one of those cameras where you put a film in and then you take the picture one or two and then you have to take the film to develop and then when it's developed you can see if your photo was good or not. Now you gotta imagine that I have this film somewhere in my old apartment in Paris. I'm in Portugal and when I, when we moved uh, this went somewhere in, in the attic. I know it's somewhere in the cave. I know that this film is somewhere with my stuff, my old stuff but uh, I never took the time to go and dig and find this film. So I have one photo with Michael Jackson, but uh, it's somewhere. And hopefully the film didn't rot or something. I know I took this picture and I have no reason to lie. Anyway, so that's 3 p.m. To us, it's like, oh my God, like we met Michael Jackson. Oh my God, we touched Michael Jackson. My manager is like going crazy and stuff. We like, we have, there was a journalist with us. I forgot her name. She was crying. She was like, oh my God, it's Michael. Me, I'm like, oh my God. I touched Michael Jackson. It's like, you know, when you meet one of your heroes, you feel fulfilled. So if, I think this is enough. 
to tell good story to your grandkids. But at 8 p.m. the same day that the thing started, so I think it was live. So I think I don't know if it was live or recorded. I think it was live. Yeah, it was live because the whole Africa was watching. So I'm getting ready to perform and uh, to see if I win any award. I think I was nominated for most promising male artist. Now we arrive in the place. The, the word is in the, in, in the street is that somebody super important is here. But we know it's Michael Jackson because we saw him already. In the front, you had the stage. After the stage, on, on, down there, you had like a bunch of VIP tables, only for VIP people. And then in the back, like, like, it was like a big theater or a stadium, like in the back you had like general public, right? And now they say, uh, let us uh, introduce you, none other than, and who comes out? Nelson Mandela. Nelson Mandela comes out and we all, we all stand, we start clapping and all of a sudden everybody in the back starts singing something in Zulu. They all chant. Everybody start chanting like if you know those African choirs, like the South African choir. Everybody, but the whole crowd, and I just start crying. You, you could just cry. It was amazing. It just came, salute everybody. Everybody are quiet. People start singing. It was magic. It was magic. Listen. In your lifetime, at 3 p.m. you meet Michael Jackson. 8 p.m. you see in front of you, like 20 meters in the distance, Nelson Mandela, the African hero. And my manager says, listen, I don't care, I want my photo with Nelson Mandela. I don't know how, I think it, the, the, organizer, the organizer of the, of the event just decided to introduce us. So I say, yeah, you know, this is Keisha. Uh, African artist, and uh, this is his manager, Guilain, and uh, bam, Guilain took photos. I didn't take a photo, I, I don't know, I, I didn't want to bother, but Guilain took her photo, she like, listen, we shake his hand, come on, Nelson Mandela. Now, if you think that's not enough, the same day you meet Michael Jackson and Nelson Mandela, I would say that 25% of your mission in this life as an artist is done. Third thing that happened that day, they announced who's the best African artist of 1999. And they say my name. This was one of those days. And I got uh, my Cora for best African artist that day. I arrived on stage, I didn't know what to say. I knew that uh, my parents were watching in Congo, my family was watching here and there, it was crazy. You know, my dad's a very famous politician and uh, in the beginning, for him, having a son being a, a singer was, you know, kind of a letdown. Even even if my, my dad always uh, supported singers, he promoted a lot of them, he helped a lot of them from the Kofi Olomide days to the, the Rocheros, that, like any parents, like you want your, your son to find something more stable and solid, like, I don't know, lawyer. Or, uh, that day, my mother told me that they were watching the thing live on TV and she saw pride in my father's eyes. And this was another 25% of my life, complete in one day, so that's 50%. One, two, three, Michael Jackson, Nelson Mandela, best African artist, the same day and the pride of my father. The same day. And if you think that's enough, number four, another thing crazy that happened the same day. After the whole thing that I got and like 
they're crazy. They take me to a room. These guys uh, forgot his name. Said, uh, "Hey, we need to interview you for CNN." For what? Yeah, we need to interview you for CNN. You're the best African artist, and boom, I do an interview on CNN. You just cannot imagine that the power that CNN had back in the days. Today, there's a lot of news outlets, and uh, there's a lot of an internet is, is is taking over. So, being on CNN back then was being in front of two billion people, if not three billion people. This this was the only news network that was global back then. It was before the days of the internet going crazy. It was before the days of everybody having smartphones, Wi-Fi. Back then, to be somebody, you had to be on television. And to be on CNN, you had to be a politician or a whatever. And I remember that uh, we do the interview and they ask me how do I feel and what do I represent, etc., etc. And when it aired, listen, the whole world called my parents, and my parents could not be more proud. And to me, that's all I needed. I didn't, I didn't care about money. I didn't care about fame. All I wanted was my parents to be proud of me, and I achieved that in one day. I just want to thank Ernest Adjovi for making this happen, the Cora Awards, because uh, thanks to him, I fulfilled a lot of dreams that day, and I had to find new dreams. Amazing. I met Michael Jackson, we talked, one second. I met Nelson Mandela, I said hi, I shake his hand. With this hand, I shake those two hands the same day. One, the best African artist, and I was on CNN. An amazing day. Have a happy Mandela day. Bless.